Hello, it is an honor and a pleasure for me today to present Medit Splints and Medit Model Builder software. We will go through multiple possibilities and highlight how easy it has become to design a splint and the needed model. First, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Alexandru Bogdan and I am a Medit QOL. I am a general dentist from Romania. I own a clinic in Sibiu where besides working completely digitally for the last five years, I also do trainings for scanning with medits, for printing and designing surgical guides and other digital protocols. Before we begin, let us ask ourselves what the future holds for us. In the last years, AI has done a significant jump in functionality and dentistry already sees a lot of fields where it is implemented. From the first moment when the patient is given an ample diagnostic based on radiographic data and intraoral scans to rearranging 40 bytes to automatically positioning implants and building crowns, bridges and splints or models, AI has not only grown into an invaluable piece of technology that makes our lives easier, but it is also here to stay. With the advancements in intraoral scanners provided by Medit, we can now impression a full arch with around 10 microns of precision. While doing this in under one minute, we can determine multiple static occlusions for different positions and also record their associated dynamic movements. Post-processing is extremely fast. And now we are only one click away from starting producing our splints, where we can choose to have the AI do the design for us, so we will be left to only do minor adjustments. As printers came more and more momentum with improved speed, precision and a slew of biocompatible materials at our disposal, we can now have our designs produced in half the time needed in the traditional protocol. And this is without factoring in the time needed for the analog impression to actually reach the lab. Reducing costs is also a factor from material to the hours of work needed in the dental lab. All this will provide a very fast and reliable source of income since splints see an ever-increasing number of designs and uses from palliative to protective to diagnostic and are widely accepted by patients. Such processes are not only easily done digitally but also highly delegable. And while others need input and adjustment every step of the way, Medit does it all with only a couple of clicks, completely automatically, with the help of AI, as you can see in the video. Now, let us start with registering the patient. Scan pass starts from the occlusal surface of the molars, goes over the intercanine area while balancing the device and continues capturing the occlusal surface of the molars to the opposite side. After that, palatal or lingual surfaces will be registered while the vestibular side will be left for last. If there are any missing parts, after the first pass, this can also be easily recorded now. I consider that precise arches have to be captured so that we can have perfect fits for splints, but also at a later date to see if there are any changes to this position. For this, I always use the reliability map that displays colors telling us how precise the scan actually is, with green meaning most precise and orange needing more data. Bite registration is first done in maximum intercuspation by capturing three to four teeth bilaterally, starting from the molar region and slightly tilting the tip up and down to the canines. Software easily picks the position of the arches. We go forward and record dynamic movements of the patient from MIP on both sides, getting protrusive and lateral movements to the left and the right without stopping the recording while going from one side to the other to ensure correct representation of the dynamic intersection model. We will now add a secondary occlusal relationship to the case and use a leaf gauge to get it. For a more precise record of an open bite, I always try to also capture the occlusal surfaces on both arches by aligning the scanner tip up and down. Alignment is fast and uneventful. A Lucia jig can be manufactured when recording of the intermaxillary position requires neuromuscular deprogramming. This can be done quickly and easily as follows. After the installation of the software, Medit Splints will be opened by clicking the appropriate icon from the upper right sec uh, section. We'll be greeted by the model selection dialog, 
where we will assign the correct models to their corresponding tabs. Then we are going to we are going forward in manual creation mode and will select a matching and type splint for the maxilla. In this next step, the user will ensure proper placement of the model on the occlusal plane, since this is how the software will actually determine how to open the jaws in the virtual articulator. Now we are setting the posterior opening of the distance we will later need to design the final splint, plus around 100 to 200 microns, so that when adapting the jig, will not drop below this value. Also, we will give a proper insertion direction to the splint, so both vestibular and palatal surfaces are visible. Retention is set to a maximum, and for the inner surface offset, we use a 70 to 100 micron choice, dependent on the resin and printer we'll use. In the outline design mode, we will delete points that we don't need by pressing the right mouse button while hovering them until only two central incisors remain selected and if needed, we can add another point by left clicking and also adjust their position by dragging them. Surface thickness is going to be set at 1.5 mm and the surface will be sculpted so that it touches the lower central incisors by means of morphing the design with a number 4 tool and then by adding and removing material. In the end, to, uh, we are going to cut the distance to the antagonist with a set value set to 0. If a more thorough deprogramming of the patient arises, we can decide to design and print a coy splint. A quick guide on how to do this will be provided next. A maxillary McChigan setting will be chosen, followed by an alignment to the occlusal plane provided by the app. Opening should be a slightly higher value as we did before to provide the chance for adaptation. Offset of the inner surface will stand at 100 microns and the retention at 0.5, while the insertion direction should have a good view at the palatal aspect of the teeth. The buckle side slider will be set to a minimum and points will be pulled to the palate where a scallop design is sculpted. On the inner interincisive zone, a rectangle is drawn that will accommodate the future coils attachment. Thickness is set to around 1.8 to be able to maintain a somewhat flexible structure, not only given by resin composition, but also by its thickness. Surface needs to be smoothed, but there is no need to worry since undersides will not be affected by our sculpting. Of course, any of the designs can be named with text embossed or debossed, rotated, made bigger or smaller with a degree of freedom we already have come to expect from Medit software. In Medit designs, the splint models, designed appliance and cuboid attachment provided in the Medit library are imported. The cuboid attachment is then positioned into place, rotated and scaled with the help of the 3D manipulator tool in Medi Designs Armamentarium, as you can see in the video here. Once our attachment is in place, it will be merged to the already designed splint by means of Boolean union, and the maxilla will then be Booleanly subtracted from this new design, providing the final splint, which, if there are any floating islands left, can be cleaned and also some material can be sculpted to the attachment if we see so fit. Now that both Lucia and Kois have been designed and printed, we'll see the Lucia splint being checked and adapted prior to recording of the new bite position. We will use the same scanned case from before and add a new occlusal relationship. If we decide to only register the static bite on the Lucia jig, I would recommend using flowable composite to be able to block the bite by provi providing some stopping points on the splint during the scanning procedure. But if the dynamic bite is also needed, we will refrain from doing this and try to get the bite as quick as possible. And now we will see the aforementioned dynamic bite on the Lucia jig being captured. This is done on both sides without stopping. With the previous data recorded, we will use the scans in the occlusion determined with the help of the Lucia jig and designed the NTI appliance and printed. Also, a model for check and delivery purposes will be built. We choose a mandibular NTI splint, then the appropriate models were imported and placed on the occlusal plane and their position is tweaked. 
also no adjustment on the position of the models are needed since this was the reason we recorded the bite with the Lucia in place. Inner surface parameters are set to an offset of 0.1 and retention 0.1, while the insertion direction is aimed to encompass both low, lower centrals and laterals. Outline will fully include these four T's. The flat plane generated was first reduced from the frontal aspect with the removal tool and the antagonist visible and then when the correct starting plane of the set splint was achieved, the upper model was checked and the rest of the plane was adjusted, flattened, smoothened to the desired inclination. Material was added beneath this attachment to the surface so it would continue more smoothly uh, from the splint to the plane and also so that the lip would not interfere with the splint. The appliance was named and the design was done. Model Builder was used to print the models of the patient in the occlusion recorded with the Lucia jig. The software allows us to exactly select the regions of the scan that we actually want to include in the models. We then need to align the scans to the occlusal plane so that the software can determine the orientation of the base of the models. In the base creation set, we can choose to build solid models or hollow them, hollow them out or do a honeycomb structure that will save resin. We can add drain holes and also a bevel if, the print, if we print the models flat. Attachments can be used from simple supports in the number, position and thickness we desire, but also stabilized bars and even the extraordinary X-snap attachment that will deliver articulated models. The results are then named and are ready to slice and print. After designing splints and models, they are exported as STL files and brought in the AI cloud-based slicer from Splintray, where they are oriented, placed on the print pad and supports are added all automatically by the AI and the results are then sliced and sent to the printer queue. We are still able to manipulate these steps, but this is seldomly needed. The placement and support adding also happens to the design splint and the result is going to be sent to the printer but it is going to be printed from a different material, from splint material. Now the actual printing takes place on my trusty Sprintray Pro 55S and we are sent a notification when everything is done. The structures are washed in the Pro Wash and automatically dried while still on the print bed. We then will remove any kind of supports and sim by simply peeling them off and will cure the prints in the ProCure 2, one of the fastest curing units I know that also has the curing times dialed in for any prints we do. Models are assembled and the height of the supports is checked with the previously built and adapted Lucia jig. The fit of the NTI splint is checked on the lower model and is verified and in the end we ensure that the height with the NTI splint in place is the same one as that we determined with the Lucia. NTI splint is delivered to the patient, fit of the appliance, then static and dynamic movements are checked and adjusted. The splint will then be polished or candy coated for a glossy surface. Finally, we'll go through a Michigan splint, designed with a slight difference that the dynamic movement model of the patient is loaded in the Lucia jig occlusion to help with design for the canine guidance. This method still needs to be checked and adapted, but only slightly. Manual creation is chosen, models are carefully checked, and then, after we do this, they are going to get aligned to the occlusal plane, where they are adjusted. Bite opening is not modified and the inner surface is set to around 100 microns and no retention is needed due to the splint being a full arch. Insertion direction and the outline are slightly tweaked to the desired position. After this step, we are going to adjust contacts by adding and removing material by, scal by means of the sculpting tool. In the end, we are going to smooth out the results like we see in the video. Canine guidance adjustments are performed with a morph tool. Surface is smoothed again and the occlusal contacts are going to be cut to a zero millimeters from the antagonist offset. Splint is then named and the design is completed. The Michigan splint is tested for fit and adjusted with first in static occlusion, then in movement. 
after everything is in place and we are happy with the outcome, we should have a splint that presents dots at the back, lines in the front and canine guidance. This splint is now going to be polished and delivered. To conclude my presentation, I will say that Medit has become not only an extraordinary hardware company that delivers a wide range of scanners from intraoral wired and wireless to an excellent array of lab scanner, but is also growing into one remarkable hardware software provider, delivering more and more solutions for quick and easy des designing of any type of restoration. One great highlight of this software is that they are completely free and very easy to use. There has never been a better time to be a digital dentist and I, for one, consider that the future is now. Thank you.